Hello, this is the notes for calculus section 4.4. What we're talking about, like it says, is the derivatives of exponential functions. Uh, so just a quick reminder, exponential function, the variable is the exponent. So uh, what we're looking at here is just the chart of the different types of exponential functions. That's this first column, and then its corresponding derivative. So um, e to the x or a to the x, where a is just a number other than 0, other than 1, and it's got to be positive. Uh, so you know, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 1 half to the power of x. So now the other type of function is when we have an exponential function where it is not just plain old x, but a different function where there's more to it than just x, 2x, 3x, x squared plus 5x minus 7, whatever. Um, when you have a function as an exponent, it changes what we got to do for the derivative. All right, so you can see this list of derivatives here, list of functions and derivatives. Take a second, copy this down. Let's do some examples. All right, so to find the derivative of this first one, dy over dx. This is just a basic e to the power of 5x. So we do have a function as an exponent. So we are going to take the derivative of that. But this is e to a power. So the derivative is e to the same power multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. So the derivative of 5x is just 5. And just going to rearrange the order. 5e to the 5x. That is our derivative. And that's it. That's all there is to it. For this next example, to find the derivative of this one, we're now dealing with a base of 3. So it's not e anymore. Um, so that changes what we've got to do for the derivative. What we're going to do is take the natural log of that base, and that's just a number. It just stays by itself. We're not going to move anything into that logarithm. Uh, it just stays there. Natural log of 3 multiplied by the original exponential function, and then our exponent is x. The derivative of that is just 1, so we don't need to do anything. That's it. That's the derivative. Okay, some of these are kind of quick, but um, they do get a little bit more challenging. So let's take a look at these ones. Uh, if you'd like to, hit pause, try these on your own first, and then hit play and see, see how you did. All right, for this one, this is 10 times e to the 3x squared. Uh, so, this 10 is just a coefficient. It doesn't change anything. We don't have to do a product rule or anything like that. It's just a coefficient. So, we're going to leave it out there in front. 10. This is e to a power. So, we keep that exponential function the same. But our exponent is a function, so we have to multiply by the derivative of that. So, the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. And here's all of our things. So, the only thing we can do is take 10 and multiply it by 6x. So we get 60x times e to the 3x squared. And that's our derivative. There's nothing else we can do with that. There's no simplifying anything. That one's done. For this problem, I'm going to change this a little bit. Because our exponent is a function other than just x, we've got 1 over x, I'm going to make this look a little bit different. Because we are going to take the derivative of that exponent, so I'm going to change that to x to a power of negative 1. Now, for the derivative, dy over dx. Okay, this 8 is just a coefficient, so that stays out in front. We have a base of 10, so we need to do a natural log of that base. Then, we need to do the exponential function, and I'll leave it like this for now. And, but then we got to multiply by the derivative of that exponent. So, x to the negative 1. That's a negative 1 times uh, x to the negative second power. Okay, just doing the power rule. Okay, so now we've got to clean this thing up. This x to the negative second, that last factor there, that is a negative exponent, so that goes into the denominator. Everything else stays up top. This is 8 times a natural log of 10. And I'm going to put that in parentheses just so it doesn't get confused with anything else going inside of that logarithm. It's just 10 that we're taking the natural log of. Uh, we have 10 to the power of 1 over x. And then we also have this negative 1. So I'm just going to throw that out in front. So it's a negative 8 times a natural log of 10 times 10 to the 1 over x all over x squared. 
Okay, kind of a weird function, but that is the derivative. And we'll do this one last example here where this gets a little bit tougher. So again, the first step is always recognizing what kind of function you're dealing with. With this one, we have a function being multiplied by another function. That's the product rule. So when we have a function that is a product of two other functions, the derivative a prime times b plus a times b prime. Okay, that's the product rule, and that's what we have to do for this one. That's the key thing about finding the derivative here. All right, so the derivative of the first factor, that's a, that is this one. It's an exponential function, it's a base e. So exponential function stays the same, times the derivative of the exponent, which is just 2x. Okay, so this is a prime. Now we multiply it by b which is the 5x plus 2. That's in the square root. I'm just going to put that as an exponent of 1 half. Plus. Okay, so that's the a prime times b. Now we're going plus a, which is the exponential function, e to the x squared plus 1, times b prime. So the derivative of b, that's a chain rule. Okay, this is 5x plus 2 to the 1 half power. So we've got to do the chain rule. So the exponent of 1 half comes out in front. Inside function stays the same. Exponent got decreased by 1, so it goes to a negative 1 half power, multiplied by the derivative of the inside stuff, which is 5. All right, that's the second term, a times b prime. So now, the next step for this problem is simplifying. We have two terms here. Okay, this is all one term. This is all a term. So we're going to look for some common factors. In each of these two terms, we have an e to the x squared plus 1 we can take out. We have the 5x plus 2. This is kind of a weird one, but we can take out a 5x plus 2. When we are factoring out quantities from multiple terms, we always take out the smallest exponent, which is the negative 1 half. So that cancels out this. We took out the e to the x squared plus 1s. And that's really all we can factor out. Now, we're going to change that exponent of that 5x plus 2 from the first term. So what's left over? We got this 2x from our first term. That's accounted for now. We got a 5x plus 2. We did not factor out 1 half. We factored out a negative 1 half. And so what's left over, what you do is you take the original exponent, which was the 1 half, and you subtract how much you took out. So we got 1 half subtracting a negative 1 half. 1 half minus a negative 1 half is just 1. So that's just 5x plus 2 to the first power. That's what was left over from that term. Plus what we have left over in the second term is 1 half times 5, which is 5 halves. All right, so now what we can do to clean this up, let me uh, bring this up a little bit. We got our e to the x squared plus 1. That's staying the same. This 5x plus 2 to the negative 1 half. Okay, it's a 1 half power, so it's going to be a square root, but it's also negative. So that's going into a denominator. And I'll put it back into a square root. And then inside of this bracket, we can do some distributive property. Uh, so 2x times 5x is a 10x squared. 2x times 2 is a plus 4x, and then we got a plus 5 halves. And that is the derivative. That is everything that we can do. There's no more simplifying to do. That's it. All right, so that's about as tough as these problems get. Doing a product rule, sometimes you're going to have to do a quotient rule. Um, so we're just following those same rules along with these rules for finding the derivative of exponential functions. That's it. Bye.